Hey everybody, this is Andrew here from Arrow Grow, and today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about 3D printing parts that need to be airtight. Uh, now, as far as why you would want to do that, I'm sure your reasons are as strange as mine. Uh, in the case of, uh, of, of why I needed to do that, um, it was for this piece you see in front of you here. This originally was uh, just meant to be a PVC uh, base uh, that held the five gallon bucket for the AeroGrow system. And then there's a piece that extends up from here that's used to hold the control panel for the, the AeroGrow system. Uh, and originally that's all it was meant to do. But then I got to thinking, instead of hooking up a metal tank right here on the AeroGrow system, why not just turn this PVC piping uh, network into an air storage device, right? It's already there. All I would have to do is seal off a piece of it and then hook some valves or, you know, uh, a control valve onto it and uh, an air inlet and a drain cock and so forth. All the things you typically have on a, uh, a tank for a, an air compressor would just need to be built into this piece here, this one section, and then I'd have a great little uh, air compressor without the need for an external metal tank, right? Perfect. The only problem was I needed to create an airtight loop here that was separate from this piece here that the wheels are attached to because the wheels have to go onto an axle. The axle goes through the PVC piping through a, a series of 3D printed uh, hub spacers, but that's not airtight. That's all opened up, right? So I can't use that for the for the air storage part. So this is my only option. I had to make this into the air storage section. So that required the installation, I'll hold this up to the camera to show you, but the installation of these, uh, these discs, little green 3D printed discs into, into these pipes here. Now these were connected inside here uh, with some silicone sealant which was, I put a little silicone sealant on the inside, I put a little on the actual disc itself, and then I popped it in there, made sure it was seated, and then cleaned up the interior wall of the PVC really well because I knew that later on I was going to have to then join it to the rear section and that was going to require PVC cement which wasn't going to stick very well if there was a bunch of silicone sealant all gooped all over there, right? So I cleaned that up. Uh, today I'm going to be actually cementing this one but I didn't want to do that until I had a chance to show you the inside of it. So uh, what do I do in order to get airtight parts? Well, uh, first step is you, you need to sort of err on the side of over extrusion if you're looking for air tightness. So the first step to that is Make sure that your, your, all your other settings are good. You've done a lot of uh, baselining. You know that your extrusion is correct. It's 100%. You don't, have any, uh, you don't want any gaps between your, your lines. Uh, you know, that's under extrusion. And what we're going for here is we really need to avoid under extrusion. And if, if we can, over extrude by just a little bit just to kind of ensure that you have that extra plastic that'll seal with itself and its neighboring plastic to create that air site, airtight seal that we're looking for. That's tip number one, make sure your settings are good uh, and your temperature's high enough as well. Uh, number two is in your software, you want to set uh, your bottom layers and your top layers to three or four. So you've got three solid bottom layers, three or four solid bottom layers, and three, uh, three or four at least, uh, solid top layers, and those will all adhere with each other, if your settings are correct, will adhere with each other and will create nice sheets of airtight material that act as kind of airtight layers, which then all bond with each other, right, ideally anyway. Uh, so that's, that's the idea behind that. So we've got uh, correct settings, a little bit of over extrusion, uh, solid top layers, solid bottom layers. Oh, uh, and of course your infill is set for 100%. Uh, I don't know what kind of parts you'll be printing, how big they will be. In this case, it's a very narrow, thin part. Uh, it, it, if, I, if I have four solid layers on the bottom and four at the top, I can only have probably a few more layers in between there. I can't recall right offhand how many there are in this piece, but uh, basically this is all solid top and bottom layers. Um, your part may be different than that, but you want to make sure it's set for 100%. Uh, the other thing I can tell you is you want to test it, obviously. Once you have a, your first prototype part, uh, pop it into something that's not going to be permanent. Do a leak down test on it. We can talk about leak down tests in another video if you want. Let me know in the comments. 
Uh, and, uh, and then once you've got the settings right, you can just go and make as many of these as you want, perfect your process, and away you go. So, hey, buddy. So uh, I've got my experts here on 3D printing. They're all about to help me with the next one and creating the next video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you are airtight printing and any issues you may